Okay. Targeting some walleye today. Gonna start with my confidence bait, which is of course just a plain old night crawler on a jig. We'll see how this goes. As always, I'm looking for about a one mile per hour drift. So we'll see what we can accomplish here. Trying to keep that line as vertical as possible. Water temps are very cold, it's 39. There's the bottom. Starting at 80 feet. And I'll work my way into more shallow water. Just gotta find uh, that first fish of the day. Find kind of where they're holding. They can be anywhere from 10 to 100 feet deep this time of year. You just never really know. There he is, there's fish. Gotta mark that spot. So I can come back to it. Feels like a good one. There's our fish. First walleye of the day. Nice. The nice eater size walleye right there. Take that any day. That first one in the boat. Let's go reset and go after some more. With these currents, I'm going to get a good workout today. All right, we're going to drift a little bit tighter to shore since that drift was a little fast. Let's see if uh, maybe we might find a few more fish stacked in here. A little tighter to the shore out of the main current. Those walleye don't like to sit in strong current, but they want a little bit of current. So they'll have some prey passing overhead. An ambush. There we go, there's fish. Got him. Ooh, very nice walleye. There we go. Great eater size, probably 17, 18 inches. I'll take that. Thump that one, I felt that one. A good hit. There you go. Really nice size walleye there. Great eater. Another thing people ask me is, do I ever use plastics for walleye? Well, night crawlers are definitely my confidence bait. I do use plastics, so today I'm going to switch up a little bit on some plastics on this next drift. Um, I'm going to start with curly tail grubs. I, they're a great walleye bait, and uh, I have certain colors that really do well for me. And I'm going to start with my confidence, which is this black and yellow sort of bumblebee pattern. So for my plastics today I'm going to use is this walleye grub from Yum. It's a, got like a yellow and white body with a black tail. And it seems to have done really well for me in the past. Especially on the Columbia River, they seem to like this color a lot. Some folks use white, chartreuse, motor oil, green pumpkin. I'm just going to thread that up onto my jig head. And uh, make another drift. Okay. All right, we got that grub down there. We'll give it a drift or two. If we don't get any hits, then we'll switch up. Some days the plastics work, and some days the night crawler shines. Well, I would say most days the night crawler shines. Only on some days do the plastics really work. Current really picked up right there. All of a sudden, I'm in an eddy or something. I'm not getting any bites though on the uh, plastic. We'll give it one more drift and then we'll come back through at the same area with night crawlers and see if that makes a difference. So that's my first drift with the plastic and I had no bites. With the night crawler, I was getting, you know, at least a bite or two on each drift and getting a fish out of every one or two drifts. So I feel like it's something that always consistently works for me. It's hard to uh, turn away from something that works just to prove a point. But I'm gonna give this drift another minute or so. Okay, we completes that drift, so we're gonna head back up. All right, so we did the drift with the plastic. We got nothing. Now we're gonna 
try a drift with Nightcrawler again. <laughs> See what happens. Since it was consistently producing, gotta get in that right drift speed. Okay, here we go. They've all been shallower than 60 feet today. Which is pretty typical when we've got spring flows. They're gonna hold more typically in that 40 to 20 foot range. All right, we're coming up on this slope. Now I've caught one on the top of the slope and one just behind it. So I'll be curious to see if we get any bites on this drift. We're drifting slightly closer to the shore now. There's so much finesse in this jigging for walleye. At depth. It's really quite annoying. Especially if you're just starting out and or you don't have the right equipment. It can be so easy to miss the bites. Not violently jigging this, just literally lifting it off the bottom and letting it drift with me down. Less is more when it comes to jigs. There's fish right there, right in the same spot. <laughs> nice. I'll mark that spot. Like quite literally in the exact same spot as all the others. It's a head shaker. Another nice eater size walleye. There we go. So I'm gonna go right back up to that spot and drift over it with the plastics. If we don't get bit there on those plastics, then we know that it's just a night crawling kind of day. Take that any day. Let's put that grub on there. Well, this guy's bleeding out in the net. And we'll go right back up over the top of that spot. All right, so we're gonna go back with our curly tail grub. Which I've caught fish on this before out here. It's the exact color, exact jig head. But there are days that it just is a night crawler kind of day. Every drift I've done with a night crawler, I've gotten a fish or a bite. This is one of those rare days. And I'm thrilled to have the PDL drive because rather than the autopilot, I purposely did not bring the autopilot today because. I need a little bit of movement, a little motion to keep me warm. By the time I get at the end of this drift, I'm cold. It's air temps 37, water temps 37. It's cold. In fact, there was ice blocking the entrance today. I had to ram the ice out away from the little back bay I launched here on the Columbia. It's pretty gnarly. Okay, we're on the bottom. All right, we're drifting over that exact spot where I've been bit every time with a night crawler. Let's see what happens. Well, I'm over the top of it. I'm gonna give it another 10 feet or so, 10, 20 feet, but never got a bite going over the top of that spot. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up, put a crawler on again, or what remains of that crawler. We'll go right back over that spot immediately. See what happens. I mean, the crawler doesn't really have much action. The curly tail grub actually has more action, but it doesn't have scent. And walleye do smell. They have great vision. They are visual predators. So we'll see what happens when we go right back over that spot with a crawler. Maybe really just pieces of a crawler. There's one. Got one. Nice. That's the first one. Oh, he came off. Dang it. That is a bummer. Go and mark that spot though. I'm gonna go ahead and reset. They are biting super light right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset. 
Definitely the Nightcrawler is outperforming Plastic Grub today. Oh, that was a bite. Dang it. I missed it too. That sucks. I'm going to mark that spot. And everything is right around this saddle. Swing and a miss. They are biting so light. They, they are really not committing. It's just a tap. So when the water is really cold like this, and I'm only getting strikes on bait, on light bait, this is a good time to bring out, look at all the striation marks on that, on that uh, Nightcrawler, he almost ripped that thing off there. This is a good time to bring out that blade bait. Oh, it's a blade bait bite. It's so strange, but when they're acting really reluctant to hit something, or to hit a lure, sometimes this blade bait will really get them riled up for some reason. Let's go out blade baiting. Do a couple drifts with the blade bait, see if that produces a fish or two. Okay, here we go. A blade baiting, we shall go. Nice thing about the blade bait is you can definitely tell if you're fishing. You'll feel those vibrations. I usually just go for about a foot and a half, two foot jig. So definitely more aggressive than what I'm doing with a baited jig. Okay, almost 99% of the time we'll hit it on the drop. So you'll just go to lift and there'll be weight. There's one right there. Nice. <laughs> Mark, that's what. That is right in the heart of where I was getting all my other bites. The nice thing about a blade bait bite, man, it's hard to miss. You lift up, feel the fish. Ooh, it's a nice fish, too. Barely got him. Just barely got him. Like one little tiny part of that dribble. Oh, yes! I got him. Yeah! Gotta love them blade baits. That is great. Awesome. Got my convenient rod holder here in the front. Okay. All right, there we go. Another fine walleye. Running a little more shallow on this one. I wanted to be thus drifting a little bit slower. Prefer to be drifting at one, not 0.7. We'll see if we'll find anything here on this inside pass. I'm really that attuned to it. Like 0.7 is too slow. 0.9 is okay. One's good. 1.1's 1 .1's okay. 1.2 maybe. Above that, it's not worth it. I mean, it's a very narrow drift range I'm looking for. Where I seem to get most of my bites. It's like if it's... They're so lazy that if it's going at 1 1.3, 1 1.4 for some reason when you're jigging, they won't hit it. But you can troll by them with a crankbait 2 miles an hour and they'll smash it. So go figure that out. Walleye are strange... Fickle, annoying, tasty beasts. Yeah, we're coming in way too slow here. On the bottom. Here we go. Alright, now we're back out in prime real estate. Drifting at point nine. There he is. God, that's crazy. Just gotta get right in that right spot. Mark that spot. This is exactly the spot where I hooked one earlier. Slow and steady pressure on him. Another beautiful, beautiful fish. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Blade bait is. Bringing them into the boat. Okay, there we go. Another fine eater size. Take that. But, uh, I feel like I gave 
plastic's a fair shot. I got three drifts this morning, no bites. I got a bite with every single worm drift. And blade bait, every drift I've actually landed a fish, so. It's sort of classic cold water walleye fishing is blade baiting. So, can't really argue with the results. Can argue with how cold my face is. Somebody could punch me and I wouldn't even feel it. Alright, there we go. Another dandy eater. Headed for the box. That is the challenging thing about fishing in a river is once you get like your drift styled and everything like that, then the current can shift, right? And so the distribution of the fish shifts, the ideal drifting lane shifts. So you, just when you feel like, oh, I'm getting you know fish after fish on a couple drifts, uh, the whole thing will just change. It's a very dynamic and challenging thing to do, especially with walleye who are very, very picky. Very, very challenging to catch at times. Right now I'm only drifting at about a half mile per hour where I was in this exact spot drifting 0 0.9 on my last drift. The current has changed that much. Which probably means I'm going to shift out more into the current deeper. But we'll finish this drift since I'm already on it. And it might just be temporary. It might just be an eddy. Alright, maybe we'll go back to Nightcrawler. The next drift, see what I can get. Blade bait suddenly stopped producing. Gotta be flexible, you can't just get hung up on one thing with walleye. Change, 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 always changing until you find what's working. Sometimes that pattern will only work for a short time. If I don't get one on this drift, I'm gonna change up and move out to a completely different lane. See if we can start up the bite again. Because right now, it's definitely slowed way down. Without current. It's tough to fish. Once again, I missed the hook set on him. Woo, yes. Another beautiful fish. Boom. Back to the bait bite. Great. Oh, that's quality right there. Man, great size fish. Can't beat that. Just changing back from the blade bait. I'm just not going to run those plastics, man. I just can't seem to get that plastic bite going. Oh man, the current's gone. The fishing's dead. It's almost been an hour since I've had a bite. I'll give it another 15 minutes and call it. All right, so I did pretty well today. I ended up with seven walleye for the day, taking home. Lost a couple more, which is a great day. It definitely slowed down once that current slowed down. But you know, in the morning when the bite was hot, those night crawlers were getting consistent bites blade baits were and i just wasn't getting anything on those plastics and there are days like that where the plastics do excel but there are a lot of days where the bait and the blade baits seem to do better especially in these cold water and i could have given the plastics more time but i know how short the bite window is on walleye so i didn't enough to convince me that it just wasn't going to produce when the worm and the blade baits were producing on almost every drift. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll put links to everything below. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section. And be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time out on the water. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.